Phillip. I'm going to do a video about an old abandoned home uh, that I had to go into and do a cleansing. I know uh, most of my videos are about, you know, places, homes, or places I have to go into where people are living and they're experiencing activity of some sort or another. For some reason or another, you know, we have to go in and help them out, you know, try to get rid of this presence. And for the most part, that's, that's true, but, uh, you know, I've had to do... Uh, cleansings, investigations, and uh, abandoned locations, you know, homes, graveyards, caves, you know, sheds, barns, whatever, you know, uh, I have to do them as well, you know, also, uh, as I've said many times, you know, these abandoned locations like that or graveyards, they just kind of naturally seem to attract demonic spirits, and I'm not saying all of them or, you know, all abandoned places or graveyards or incested with demons, you know, but a lot of them are, and you just have to be careful when you go there, you know. If you go to an old abandoned location, graveyard, place like that, you know, just listen to your spirit, your gut, you know, your body, whatever, you know, it'll it'll tell you if something's going on, you know. If your spirit is, listen to your spirit, you know, if it's telling you something's not right, listen to it, get out of there. You know, if you're, uh, start feeling really nauseated, uh, maybe a sharp headache, a hair gets standing up on the back of your neck, whatever, you know, that's your body uh, alerting you to the presence of a demonic spirit, you know, telling you something's not right and you need to get out of here, you know, listen to your body, your spirit, your gut, whatever, you know, pay attention to it, you know, when you're in these locations, if, if, if your, your spirit is trying to tell you something, listen to it and get out, because something's going on, but, uh, you know, I do investigations in places like that as well. It's not just homes where people are living in. Uh, in this particular abandoned home, it wasn't that a demonic spirit was just naturally attracted there and sight, you know, decided, oh, this looks like a good place. I'm going to live here, you know. Or it wasn't ghost hunters in there poking around and stirred it up. In this particular case, uh, a guy has, had uh, went into this home and hung himself in the stairwell uh, of this whole house and uh, was later found by a guy that was hunting on the property you know he was just out hunting came up on this old house just said oh you know I'm going to here and have a look around goes in and finds a guy hanging in there in the stairwell so uh, this particular house you know it had a very tragic violent act that took place in this house and uh, you know, as I've said before, anytime you have a murder, suicide, or rape, or any kind of a violent, traumatic act like that takes place, more than likely there's a demonic spirit behind that person influencing them to do so, to do that act. And even with that being said, when a violent act or traumatic act like that takes place, you know, uh, even a, a you get a very real bad sickness, get down sick really bad, and you get really weak, you know, any type of an act, you know, very traumatic event takes place, or a violent uh, event takes place, it can attract demonic spirits, you know, so, that was the case in this particular house, you know, a uh, violent traumatic act had taken place, you know, and that demonic presence was there because of it. Everybody around the area that knew about the house knew about it. Everybody was kind of uneasy about it. You know, this house kind of had a dark stigma or whatever to it. You know, uh, the property owners, in an attempt to try and, I guess, do something about it, placed two big wooden crosses there at the house. One of them leaned up against the front door of the house. Another one leaned up in the doorway uh, of the stairwell where the guy hung himself. That was just a way, I guess, of trying to do something about what had taken place there and activities surrounding the house. Uh, maybe somebody told them to do that. I don't know. But uh, the crosses are still there today. I didn't, didn't bother them. I just left them alone. But uh, the house had an eerie feeling to it. You know, it did have a presence to it. Uh, the house was active while we were there. The neighbor and his brother that took me there, you know, they was you could tell they was a little eerie of a place. They was kind of sticking close to me, you know, kind of hanging close to the front door. Uh, in case they had to make a run for it, I guess, or something, you know. Uh, you know, everybody around, I guess, that knew anything about this house, was, you know, was a little uneasy about it. And like I say, it was active while we was there. Uh, I was standing over in the one room where the stairwell was, uh, just standing over there, and the two, two other guys were just standing a few feet away through the doorway, standing over by the front door. 
And one of them, well, both of them started going, come here, come here, Philip, come here, come here, come here. And I just stepped over there to where they were, and they thought, listen, listen. And you can kind of hear shufflings going on in the room, kind of on the other side of the room, like something was moving around. It was started hearing scratching on the wall. And it wasn't like a little mouse was scratching around. No, this was like, <laughs> you know, it was pretty obvious, you know. And, I'm, and they were just kind of like looking at each other, looking at me, you know. I'm like, hmm, <laughs> you know, it's interesting. <laughs> and, uh... When that all started up, I just said, you know, okay, I've, <laughs> I know what's going on here. There's no sense in hanging around any longer. So I just, you know, said in the name of Jesus Christ, there's a demonic spirit or spirits in this house, you know. You need to get out of here now. You know, in the name of Jesus, I command you to leave, leave now, you know, whatever. Done my thing. And uh, no sooner than I had said that, uh, you know, I've always talked about uh, a lot of times how when I've, done these cleansings in home, commanded these things to get out in the name of Jesus, you know, how a lot of times it's not very dramatic, you know, a lot of times you just feel that demonic presence, give up and leave, you just kind of feel it in your spirit, you know, sometimes it can be dramatic, sometimes it's, you know, it's pretty quiet, you just feel it leave in your spirit. And that wasn't really the case here, you could physically feel this demonic presence when it left the house, and it wasn't just me that felt it, the two guys that were with me felt it too, and that was pretty cool. Uh, when I told this thing to get out, the only way I know how to describe it was, I mean, you could physically feel this thing leave. It was just like all the air in this house just kind of got sucked out the back door. I mean, you could physically feel the air in this house rush out the back door. You know, that was that presence getting out, getting out of the house. And as it left the house, I mean, not a second later, a bunch of coyotes right behind the house, pretty close to the house, actually, uh, started carrying on. A few seconds later, a little further back, some more coyotes. A few seconds later, a third set of coyotes. That was the number three. You know, I've talked about the number three being symbolic with, you know, the demonic many times. Three sets of coyotes went off in a straight line as this thing took off. You know, when this thing took off, Those coyotes, I guess, you know, knew this thing was coming through and started going off. But it was just really weird that it was three sets of coyotes that went off. You know, like I've said, the number three is very symbolic in the, you know, in the demonic realm, you know. Were they really coyotes or was that just that number three coming in, you know, that demonic spirit letting me know, yeah, I'm out of here. Uh, but it was just, it was the whole thing was just really weird. And like I say, it wasn't me that just noticed it, felt it. You know, the two guys that were with me did too. And that, that was really cool that they were, you know, that they experienced that, you know, and knew what was going on. You know, hopefully that opened their eyes to the power of God and what the name of Jesus can do, you know. And hopefully they went out and told other people what took place there that night. And, you know, it opened a few other eyes to, you know, just what the power of God and the name of Jesus can do, you know. Uh, these demons, as I've said a million times, you know, they can make a lot of noise and put on a good show, but when you invoke that name of Jesus, throw that in their face, you know, and it's a different story then, you know. They're not going to hang around there. But uh, that was just what happened, you know. Uh, again, this was just an old abandoned home. Uh, you know, nobody was living there stirring anything up. It was just an act that took place several years prior in this home that created this demonic presence, you know, that was why that demonic presence was there. So again, you know, I just want to say, you know, be careful when you go poking around these old abandoned homes. I love old abandoned homes, graveyards, you know, I love, I'm, I'm an explorer. I love go, poking around places like this, just, you know, the history, you know, stuff like that, you know, but if I go into a place, you know, and my spirit tells me there's something here, you know, I either just you know, you could just deal with it, or if I feel like, well, okay, I, I think it'd be, be best just to leave you here and leave you alone, you know, whatever, you know, I do whatever I feel led to do, but, you know, like I say, when you go into these old abandoned homes, if your spirit, your gut, your body is telling you something's not right, pay attention to it and get out of there, you know, say a little prayer as you go, you know, go, hey, in the name of Jesus, don't you be coming with me, you stay here, you know, but uh, that was just my what happened during that case and hopefully y'all learned something from it and thanks for watching